Yo, you're watching your Screaming Fish here, people, and once again, I'm here for another, uh, for some more movie talk. But this time, it's not a movie review. Instead, it's sort of similar to, to um, one, some of my other videos. I've done, like, sort some a bit like, uh, 10 Reasons Independence Day Sucks, but it's not negative or anything. It's basically saying, me, me talking about why I would love to see Jared Leto's Joker be in his own movie. And also a few tips on how to do it. So, now, before I properly start this video, I would just like to say that I was one of the many fans that really enjoyed Suicide Squad. It didn't disappoint me at all. I do recognise that it has its flaws, but overall I thought it was, a re it, it was very enjoyable. And entertaining, and it was just great to see a light-hearted DC film. And I will also say that I like Jared Leto as the Joker. I like that he made the character his own and didn't just copy what Heath Ledger or Jack Nicholson did. I thought it was a pretty amazing performance and definitely one I would one I would love to see in future movies. However, I think Suicide Squad's biggest problem, as much as I like the film, was in its marketing campaign. And as a lot of you know, Joker was in Suicide Squad for at least ten minutes, and it's it's not because of. It's obviously because everyone got disappointed with the amount of Joker screen time. Obviously because he was in pretty much every single trailer. Minus the character trailers. And um, he really shouldn't have been, He really should have only just been in the one. Especially seeing as how he was only in the, in the movie for 10 minutes. So because the Joker was literally the face of the marketing campaign. It obviously drove in a lot of attention. Which in turn built up hype towards Jared Leto's take on a Joker. And we also saw a lot of footage, footage of the Joker, which we didn't end up getting in the final cut of the movie, which disappointed a lot of people. Looking forward to see to seeing a lot of him in the movie. Heck, even some someone even threatened to sue DC for false avatar for the false advertising of the Joker. Personally, I liked what he what we got from the Joker in Suicide Squad. However, even I can admit that after a while, you get that feeling that you liked what you got. But you didn't get enough of it, and you want more. Which is what I felt with this interpretation of the character after a while. Which I don't think is Jared Leto's fault. We have the editors to blame for that, obviously. Some people have even gone as far as to say that there is more Joker footage in the music video for Skrillex's Lamborghi Purple Lamborghini. And while I respect their opinions, I don't believe that to be true. Simply because that's pretty much comparing four minutes... Of footage to 10 minutes of footage from a movie. I'm not trying to tell anyone they're wrong, that's just what I believe. That that said, the Joker footage in the music in the music video for Purple Lamborghini is amazing. While in Suicide Squad we saw him being an absolute psychopath, which I like, and he was also after Harley Quinn. But in the music video, we actually got to see Jared Leto play the clown prince of crime we all know and love from the comics. Watching that music video actually felt like I was watching the Joker footage we really should have gotten in the movie. As much as I loved what we got in Suicide Squad. Which leads me to the actual to topic of this vi video, which is why I think Jared Leto deserves his own movie and a few tips here and there on how to do it. A Joker movie could give us... <laughs> pretty much everything we wanted from the Joker that we didn't get in Suicide Squad, which I will get back to in a moment. So one of the things I liked about the Joker in Suicide Squad was that we got a more psychopathic take on the Joker. I would even say that it's the darkest version of the character next to Heath Ledger. I think the movie can explore that a little further and give us a little more of it. But, the, but what I don't want to come out of that is what they did in Suicide Squad, because while I did like the scene... Where the Joker was just like, I'm just going to hurt you really, really bad. From the trailer, it, but in the movie, I didn't like it that much because, well, because of the pink lighting and the millions upon millions of cuts. Yes, I know, it was just done to make it creepier and more psychopathic. But it came out looking really silly, and during that moment, I, w I was kind of thinking, what am I watching right now? Instead of getting chills, like I did watching the first trailer that was shown at Comic-Con, I was kind of left thinking what I was, what I was, um, you know, like, I was, I was kind of thinking, why didn't I get any chills like I did in the Suicide watching the Suicide Squad trailer? 
I want more of those psychopathic scenes, that said, with the Joker, but make them long, extensive shots and don't do what they did in that particular scene in Suicide Squad because otherwise it's just going to look a little silly. But Heath Ledger, for Heath Ledger, I mean, he gave a really good performance as the Joker in The Dark Knight and he is admittedly still my favourite on-screen version of the character. But even if you add the pink lighting and the millions upon millions of cuts and the ec and the echoes echoey voice effect it just comes off looking really silly and it turns a really good performance into a really bad looking into a really bad looking one so please give us more of that psychopathic side of the joker but don't make it look silly like you did in suicide squad make long extensive shots of it when when he truly is being a psycho and make it chilly like how it was in the first Suicide Squad trailer. That scene in the end of that Suicide Squad trailer sent chills down my spine. But in the movie, because of how they edited it and the pink lighting, it just came off really silly and I'm not going to lie, really over the top. Another thing a Joker movie can do is really show what this guy is capable of. Another problem with the lack of Joker screen time as was the fact that we never actually got to see the extent of what he's actually capable of. Yes, we saw him attack a government research base, hijack a military-grade chopper, and break Harley Quinn out of a high-security prison, but that was really about it. One of my favourite scenes from The Dark Knight is when the Joker walks in on a meeting between a, gang a gangster and his gang members, or goons, whatever you want to call them, and did that magic trick with the pencil thing. That scene is there to divert the character of the Joker and show what he can do to a guy hand-to-hand -hand combat wise and what he's willing to do to get what he wants. And believe me, when he when this version of the Joker wants something, he gets it no matter what you say or do, because he will do whatever it takes to get to get it. I mean the guy had was willing to blow himself up just so they so the gang gangs could the gangsters could let him go. Not to mention, that scene where he burns his share of the stolen money is there to show that he's not in it for the money, he's just in it to create chaos. Which I think is a really interesting way to go about it when it comes to the storytelling of the character. The guy even dressed hostages as Joker, Joker thugs so they would get killed and not him or his own goons. That's pretty awesome if you ask me. That movie perfectly showed the Joker what the Joker was really capable of of, but because of the, the amount that was cut out from Suicide Squad, we didn't really get to see what this version of the Joker was truly capable of. Jared Leto was, he has even said said that the amount of, su of the Suicide Squad footage of the Joker that was cut from the movie is enough f footage to create a Joker movie. A lot of that, a lot of those scenes could have been used to show what this Joker was truly capable of. Which, like I've already said, is something jo a Joker movie can give us. It could show us how skilled he is when it comes to hand-to-hand -hand combat, or how much control he actually has over the streets of Gotham, or the amount of goods he's got under his belt. Even what, even what he would be willing to do to take over a city like Gotham. I, for one, would really like to see that in a Joker movie, because it's... Not go. It's not going to do any because he's not going to do like absolutely nothing the entire runtime, is he? Doing something to take over the city like Gotham simply to create chaos brings about the perfect opportunity to really show what he's willing to do to accomplish that goal and what he's truly capable of. Making the Joker movie also brings about the opportunity to further develop the conflict between the Joker and Batman. Now, one of the reasons I would want to see this is because. In my eyes, you can't have Joker without Batman the same way you can have Batman without the Joker. I'm not saying make Batman the main protagonist. What I mean is either make him a key character or have a side plot about him trying to track down the Joker. Either way, I think Batman should at least have about 30 minutes of screen time in a, in a Joker movie. Another reason is because I want to see the conflict between the Joker and Batman more de more developed. I what I don't want I don't want to see just have the Batman going after the Joker just because he's a common criminal. I would much rather s prefer to see the Joker do something to really anger Batman which in turn would motivate Batman to go after the Joker. 
We could also get to see Batman from a criminal's point of view, similar to how we saw him in Suicide Squad. But at the same time, I would rather not have have the Batman be a huge focus of the movie because this is a movie about the Joker, not Batman. So, uh, something I would love to see happen with this movie is they could make the Joker both the protagonist and the antagonist. I'm not saying make him an anti-hero. No, that would be awful. What I mean is make this movie really show that this is about a bad guy and not a good guy. I don't want him to have a change of heart and become a hero in the end. That, again, would, would make literally no sense at all. It worked in Suicide Squad for characters like Deadshot, Kitana, or, I mean, even Cri Killer Croc at times. But I don't think it would work in a Joker movie, particularly because the Joker is a flipping psychopath. He does not care who dies or who gets hurt, so long as he gets what he wants. And in Suicide Squad, that was Harley. If you look at a film like Nightcrawler, which was directed by Dan Gilroy, it w which is one of the best films I've ever seen, the main character, Louis Bloom, was in a way both the protagonist and the antagonist. You could clearly see what he was willing to do, what, how what he was doing was affecting him psychologically, and it also showed what he was willing to do to be successful with what he was doing. He literally sabotaged a bit his business rival's car and got, got his business rival killed so he could get film for the news, no problem. Without any, without no one beating them to it, and and he even tricked his own partner into getting killed just so he could get footage of it for the news. That's pretty dark, if you ask me, and it's also why I would love to see someone like Dan Gilroy direct this film. Admittedly, Nightcrawler is the only one out of Dan Gilroy's films that I have actually seen, but the way the film was directed and the way the story was told pretty much showed that Dan Gilroy can direct this this movie. He obviously knows how to make a protagonist and an antagonist the same person, which is actually the route I can see a Joker movie going in. A Joker movie also gives Jared Leto the chance to really show us that he can play the jo the character of the Joker and turn the role into something iconic. Jared Leto, in my opinion, really does need a second shot at this character, in my opinion. Either in Ben Affleck's solo Batman movie or his own Joker movie, which is the preferred choice, in my opinion. So guys, thank you for watching. Uh, I do hope you enjoy this, and I will indeed see you in the next one. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, and I will indeed see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.